Hi there. Okay. Today I thought we would try something new and I would like to do this probably once a week to have something, just a quick little video out. And I know that people don't think that I can actually do quick little videos, but I'm going to try with this because it'll just be a quick thing popping up because, you know, my site is called The Truth and Story. And for me, um, stories are really about tapping into the universal unconscious. That really is what one of the huge pulls for story writing is for me is that fact that it all when when you tap into a really good book it hits something that that is outside of time and it's outside of cultural references and it just hits something and whether it's something that we're all really afraid of or if it's something that we all really dream of or really all hope for or if whether it's um, highlighting flaws that everybody is part of the human race has it all uh, it connects us across you know we can read a book like Mary Shelley's Frankenstein written by a 19 year old girl in 1832 ish um, <laughs> um, and, ha and it's about science fiction it's about creating our own monsters and then discarding them and it's about all sorts of things but we can read that even though we have no real understanding or relation of what um, it meant to live in her particular time period and to dream her particular dreams it resonates with us now even in 2015 um, and the, so that's the power of stories is that ability to cross those time gaps those cultural gaps sometimes um, economic gaps you know we can uh, read like the bluest eye we may be white and we can read uh, the bluest eye and sort of um, tap into that at least uh, for a little while that sense of what it means and to be in a culture in which you're not the dominant race and coming out of slavery and those types of things. So books have that sort of power to um, cross all kinds of things. Movies as well. I mean, you think about Star Wars and how much that's become part of our mythology. I mean, movies are definitely um, within that. But we're going to stick with books because there are so many good books. Um, and because this is the truth and story, so <laughs> we're, which movies are telling stories too. So I'm not going to say that a movie won't ever show up uh, in this. But oh, where did I put it? I actually have the paperback version of it, but I'm pretty sure that my daughter stole it because I read this book to my kids quite a few times and it's a very small book. You can still get it uh, both on the Kindle. So here, uh, this is a Kindle Paperwhite. Um, this is not an advertisement. <laughs> I'm not getting paid to advertise the Kindle. Um, I will say though, I, you know, at first I was going through my actual bookshelves and a lot of my books are in down in the storage unit or they're up in my closet because I don't really have a full bookshelf um, in this apartment where I can put them all out. My old apartment, I had like shelves all around the walls that are like the halfway point. And so it was just the right size for a paperback. I just loved that. I thought that was the absolutely the most amazing thing because I had just all literally surrounding all the way through. It was a one bedroom, so the living room into the bedroom, it was just surrounded by books and I just loved it. But in this apartment, I don't have that and I don't particularly have a bookcase full of books right now. So anyways, I'm like, well, if I just, if I really do um, narrow myself down to just the books that I physically have the copy of, then I'm going to be narrow myself down to some book, good books. So I thought I actually did have, I sat down to do this and I didn't even look for it because I just assumed it would actually be down here or in one little shelf that I have because it's an older book and it's a quite small book. It's still bugging me because there's that sense of, I know it's in here somewhere, but I can't find it. So my guess is that my daughter stole it because she does have a little book of, a little shelf of books um, that I think mean a mental that I think mean a lot to her from her childhood and I'm pretty sure she stole it and I'm going to check. But be that as it's may, I'm going, um, I totally went off on a rabbit trail. Oh, my point being that if I, uh, make it so that I can't do only any books that, that I have a lot of books on my Kindle. Um, you know, I'm a bookaholic. I have always had tons of books when I was in 
not fifth grade. I don't even know. Uh, when I was in second or third grade, um, our TV broke. It was a little black and white TV. I do remember that. And our TV broke. And my parents decided that there wasn't enough on TV to be worth fixing it. Now, later on, when I was in fifth grade, uh, my parents got saved into sort of some uh, fundamental Christianity. And we probably would have gotten t rid of the TV anyways then. But anyways, be that as it may, I grew up without a television from about second or third grade. I want to say more like second grade all the way through until I was married at the age of 20. I did not have a TV in the house. And while there are many, many, many religious aspects that I regret in my childhood, there is nothing that I regret about ha not having a television. It was probably the best thing that ever happened. So um, my dad was a big reader and he did read, he used to read Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit and stuff like that to us. And my mom isn't as much of a reader, but she always read to us. And I just haunted the library. I literally read everything. I didn't matter what category it was in, mythology. I went through the mythology section. I uh, probably went through sections that for my age I probably shouldn't have gone through, but I read everything at the library. And so when, you know, Kindles came out or, you know, I've always had a Kindle, so I know there's uh, nooks and you know, there's all kinds of different e-readers. So when e-readers came out, people were like, oh, you're going to just hate that because you're like a bookophile, like you're a book person, a physical book. I do like physical books. I crack the spines of books. I bend the pages of books. I write in books. Um, I am not, I love books, but I am not, I don't hold the physical copy of a book in reverence. I love the act of just getting in there and working. Working with a book, so when 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 e-readers came out, I, most people that knew me thought that I would absolutely hate them. That is not the case. I actually quite love the e-readers because it's instant. If I, if it's three in the morning and I can't sleep and I have nothing to read, I can order a book, and it's there. It's instant. That's amazing. Um, yeah, I mean, any book I want, I can order it and, and have it instantly. And, and in space, again, space isn't, you know, if you're living in one-bedroom apartments, I, you know, if I had a book for every, a physical copy of every single book I read, oh my goodness, it would it would not be good. It has not been good in the past. <laughs> so then I'd have to sort through them all and resell them back and everything. And so, yeah, not a good thing uh, for me. But e-readers have been fantastic, and I have nothing against them, and I love them, and I have lots of books. However, if it's a book that I love, that is one of my favorite books, I tend to end up with both the old physical copy, and then when it comes back around in my mind, like, oh, I'd really like to reread that, uh, I can't find the physical copy, blah, 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 then I end up with two copies, sometimes three. There is one book maybe two books. Okay. There's a couple books that I have three where I actually have The Book Thief and oh I'm gonna have to look up who that is and stick it here because I can't remember off the top of my head. The Book Thief I have the physical copy of, I have the uh, Kindle copy of, and I also have the Audible copy of because the Audible reader, if you like audiobooks, The Book Thief audio version is absolutely amazing. I know that they've made it into a movie. I have not seen the movie because because I love the book too much and I love the audio version too much and I just feel like the movie's going to water it down. Be that as it may. My point being, if I really love something, I tend to have multiple copies of it. Um, I'm going to put up, because I, I know you can still buy this book, I'll put a link to the, the book that we're going to talk about today um, in the description box, because um, I know you can still buy it, both the Kindle version, um, the Kindle version, as well as the uh, a, a paperback. It's still in print, even though it is an older book. 
and but the copy see i'm a big person with covers and the covers that are is in the the new one that you can buy right now is not the old cover which i loved so 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 much um so i'm going to put insert here when i start actually talking about the book i'll put a picture um, of the cover that i have which is why i wish i had the physical copy daughter of mine I'm 99.9% .9 sure as he stole it, and I'm going to find out. <laughs> um, so I just thought that I would just kind of randomly pick books that were of interest to me, um, that I really loved, um, just randomly, whatever. It could be a short story. There's a couple of short stories that I definitely would want to touch on. Um, and then just uh, a tarot card that might particularly go with that book. So the book that we're talking about today is called Moon Flash by Patricia McKillop. Now, Patricia McKillop is an amazing writer. And I talked about her in another video just briefly when I was talking about fantasy books that are just amazing and she is incredible I have a lot of her books um, she is a very lyrical writer um, her books really are they have that sense of being poetry in novel format uh, very very lyrical in terms of the way that she uses words and her fl the flow of her writing is extremely lyrical um, they're generally very fantasy based but it's that sort of magical realism um, there's just this it's more. It's more than a. Fa it's not a fantasy book, as in like Lord of the Rings. It's just got this just amazing fairy tale. It's like a. It's like a fairy tale in the best possible sense of the word. If you haven't read any of her books, um, I would definitely recommend that you sift through the section with Patricia McKillop and see if anything jumps out. And I'm sure that more than one of her books is going to show up in this little series. Um, but we're starting with one of what I think is one of her older books, and it's quite small. Um, let's see if I can look up. Because one of the bad things about the Kindle version, just in terms of doing this, is this, is that that you don't you can't even look at the page numbers it kind of has like the place number um so my intention is to try to use physical copies when i have it i just literally sat down to do this assuming i had the book and i didn't so i'm just just going to go with it uh, but it's quite a small book it's about 150 pages i just looked up um, on amazon it was originally published in the early 80s i want to say 1980 i should probably say so here too uh first publication First publication was 1984, and it's only 150 pages, so it's more like a novella. And uh, the name of it is Moon Flash. And I'm not going to give things away uh, because I do, you know, hopefully you'll, you'll be interested in reading the particular book and you will go read it. So I'm not going to give much away. Um, only to say that the card that I have picked to go with this book um, is... One of my favorite moon cards. This is from Tarot of the Hidden Realms. And I will put a close-up of this image too, just so you can see it up close. Um, but it is absolutely a stunning card. There is such a feral quality to it. Uh, there is just a wildness to it and she's really studying the ground and she's really finding her path out and trying to really uh, get clear of what is reality and what is illusion and moon flash is very much about that idea of that sometimes when we just go off of our own direct experiences and our own um you know, physically what we can see, these types of things. Um, sometimes when we just go off of that, we're only seeing a small bit of the puzzle and be outside of the veil, um, outside of our perceptions and our realm of experience, there is so much more that we don't even realize is there. And Moonflash very much capitalized on that idea of, of really, you can go a lifetime thinking the world is one way and when you can get outside of that and find your way through uh, the moon uh, that can kind of veil things and it's not necessarily that that 
um, her life or our life as we perceive it is not truth. It is a form of truth, but it isn't the only form of truth. That there is a bigger truth that is outside of our, our immediate experience. And, you know, she's really getting at that. She's getting down in the ground. She's looking at what is real. She's finding her pathway through. I just think this is an absolutely stunning card. It's one of I would probably have to, so far that I can think of, I would have to say this is my favorite moon card. And the truth is, I didn't pick it because moon flashed that it was, um, actually I didn't even think of that until just right now. It was more her feral quality. It was more that idea of really getting at the roots of what is real and what's not, moving outside of our own perceptions, although given it is the moon and it's moon flash and if you read the book you'll see that the, how important the idea of the moon is um again i'm not going to give things away because i hope that you'll give this book a chance but it definitely goes with this tarot card um and it definitely has that message of you know Yes, except this is your truth. You know, what you're experiencing is your truth, but it's not the only truth and it's not the whole truth. You can't ever really see the whole truth when you're right just from your own perspective because you're not seeing all these other people's own truths. You know, truth is a very... It's it's a word, I think, that is laced with perception. Um, I don't know how much truth there is that isn't tied in with perception because how we perceive things is what very much uh, develops our sense of what is true, uh, what is reality. You know, you kind of get into these ideas of reality and our perception of reality can shift even down another block and somebody uh, is maybe raised in a completely different way and see the world in a, in a, a completely different way, uh, all based on their perception. Um, so moon flash and again i'll put a picture of the cover up here because for this one i don't have it and i was going to plow ahead with it anyways um and this particular and any of the moon cards obviously would would relate to this particular book but this one in particular because we again we have that very feral quality we have that very almost native quality about this uh, particular moon um we definitely have just a a fierceness you know she's got a fierceness about her this fear she is going to find her path she is going to find the path through she is going to really get down dig her hand her hand is like literally digging into the earth you know she's going to dig in and really get connected with what's going and figure out what is is going on around it and find her way through um the illusions that may be putting um by moonlight that we're not seeing clearly until she can get out of that that's just just amazing it's a stunning card and the book moon flash by patricia mckillop is a stunning book and one that i highly recommend and so there you have it just a quick little um this is this is longer than probably they're going to be just because i had to talk about a couple things but probably not anyways um, i'm going to try to make them just quick little uh exact basic summaries of the books and you know why a particular card might might go with it or really connect with it and i don't know maybe you'll find some interesting books um to read if you have any books that go with tarot cards that you want to suggest to me please put them in the um, comment box below um and I plan on putting these out probably every Friday. Um, so if you subscribe below, um, you'll get notified when they come into your box. Um, but yeah, the deck, highly recommend. The book, I highly recommend. <laughs>